The story begins with a man fighting a beast covered in white snow. As the man deemed the monster worthy of a present for his master, he cut the beast into pieces. At the Rubedo family estate, a young girl named Wenty was mad at her butler named Art for taking a long time slaying a dragon. Art apologized for being late. However, Wenty no longer had the appetite to eat and told her father that Art had failed in his duties again. The head of the Rubedo family became mad and was disappointed at Art for failing in his duties. After believing that he himself was useless, Art fainted before hearing his master's request. When Art was still a baby, he was taken in by the Rubedo family. Art was trained to serve as a family butler. Art and Wenty used to get along well, but it eventually changed when Wenty developed a strong temper. Wenty demanded more tasks, from housework to slaying beasts. Art ended up developing magic just to serve Wenty. As Art's tasks piled up, he eventually stopped thinking and moved on to what was tasked to him. After collapsing in front of the head of the Rubedo family, Art was fired from his job and kicked from the estate. Walking in the forest and wondering what his next plans were, Art accidentally tripped, causing his food rations to fall. As Art laid on the ground covered in snow, a wolf sneakily walked towards him. When the wolf pounced at Art, he was able to grab the wolf's jaw and pin it to the ground. Grabbing his weapon, Art was about to kill the wolf when he suddenly heard barks nearby. After seeing the wolf cubs, Art decided to let go of the wolf and planned to head west to join a guild. After fighting multiple beasts and eating what he deemed edible, Art eventually reached the guild Firen. Seeing that there were many extermination requests, Art decided to take the Isfiel family laundry request since it fits his previous work. Aside from the guild receptionist, the people inside the guild looked at Art with worry since nobody had succeeded in the laundry request. Everyone stopped talking as the Ice Princess of Isfiel family walked into the room. After glaring at everyone, Isfiel handed over the quest items to the guild receptionist. When the guild receptionist told the princess that someone wished to take their family chores, she was then pointed at Art's direction. The infamous Ice Princess then introduced herself to Art as the eldest daughter of the Isfiel family, Isfiel Urk. Surprised after seeing Urk's manners, Art bent his knees and introduced himself to Urk. Both were surprised when Art spouted a line used as a butler. When Urk warned Art that the monster's blood won't wash off easily, Art did not falter as he still wanted to take the quest. When Urk asked how long it would take for Art to clean the blood off, Urk was surprised after hearing Art mention one hour. Urk then brought Art to the Isfiel family estate and was told to follow Tet to the garden. Tet then introduced himself to Art as the head butler and wanted to confirm with Art if he is here for the laundry. After following Tet to the garden, Art learned that Urk became an adventurer to prove her worth according to family traditions. Tet also explained that the Isfiel family was a noble house with the rank of Marquis. After learning the Isfiel family history, Art found their ways quite harsh. After bringing Art the laundry and explaining to him how long the cleaning would take, Tet was surprised that Art did not even show a worried look. When Urk finally arrived at the garden, he asked Art if there was still blood on her face as he stared at her for so long. Finding Art strange, Urk smiled before bidding Art good luck. Seeing the difference between Wenty and Urk, Art took off his coat and started cleaning the clothes. The other helpers wondered if Art was fine and offered help. However, Art told them he was fine and proceeded to show his magic in clearing the clothes. Urk was amazed as she had never seen such kind of magic before. It was the type of magic that Art developed in doing all of his chores, his very own original domestic magic. Urk found the bubbles that are coming out of the clothes beautiful. After hanging the clothes, Tet and the other helpers were amazed as the clothes looked brand new. Since Tet was curious about what methods Art used, Art asked them if they had heard of slimes, as he explained how the slimes absorb and digest anything they touch. From that same principle, Art created the digestion spell. Art then replaced the digestive fluids with detergent to clean things. The maids found Art's creation ingenious. As Urk stared at Art, he and Tet were surprised when Urk apologized for doubting him. Urk was amazed at how fast Art finished the laundry, while she had made everyone work for as long as it needed. Art was surprised when Urk asked if it was okay to call him again. Triggering a memory he had with Wenty, Art bent his knees and told Urk that he would do whatever she commands. Urk touched Art's face and clarified with him that what she asked wasn't an order but rather a request. Art liked that word request as he was used to being given orders constantly. However, being told of a request gives him the right to decide for himself. Art smiled as he now decides to live for his own life moving forward. Art was surprised when he saw Urk right after he opened his eyes. He then became confused as he wondered where he was. Art was now worried as he couldn't remember why he was on a bed. Art covered his face with a pillow as he was embarrassed after realizing that he was in Urk's room. After being asked by Urk if he didn't remember, Urk explained that Art collapsed after doing the laundry. Art exhausted himself from doing so much laundry. Art couldn't believe it himself that he pushed himself too far using magic alone. When Urk asked if he was okay, Art responded that he was now much better. However, Urk knew Art was lying since he looked so pale. 
When Irk showed Art his reward for cleaning the clothes, he was surprised after being handed a chest full of treasures. When Art responded that he does not have plans elsewhere, Irk gave him a new set of clothes to which he was very grateful. Before complimenting how Art looked in the suit, Irk mentioned that the suit is clothing prepared for servants as she wishes to employ him. Art thanked Irk for her generosity as he would gladly serve her. However, Irk asked Art to stop with the formalities as they are of the same age. After agreeing to Irk's terms, they then headed for breakfast. Art then whispered to Tet, asking him why Irk was acting so nice. Tet assumed that Art had heard of the rumors circulating in the guild. Tet then explained why Irk was known as the Ice Princess. There were many nobles that despised the commoners. Irk absolutely despised those kinds of nobles and could not stand being in the same presence as them. Irk was a kind person as she sees the same perspective as the commoners. At the dining area, Art was greeted by the head of the Isfiel family, Isfiel Ramon. As Ramon and Art got comfortable with each other, Irk noticed the dark circles under her father's eyes getting worse. Irk suggested her father see a doctor. However, Ramon does not want to consult a doctor for only dark circles as he assumes that it was due to not sleeping properly in the house. Ramon and Irk got into an argument over Ramon's health. Ramon immediately changed the topic and told everyone that he missed the imperial beds as he felt like sleeping on clouds. Everyone was surprised when Art offered to make Ramon an imperial bed. Seeing everyone's reaction, Art wondered if he said something wrong. Ted explained that only a craftsman with decades of experience could make a royal bed. At the shortest, Ted believed that one could make it in a year. When Art mentioned that his previous master had told him before to make it from a glance, Ramon found it intriguing and offered 10,000 gold to Art if he really could make one. Hearing the head of the Isfiel family making a humble request, Art felt nostalgic since it has been long since someone depended on him. When Art mentioned that he first needed some great blackbird feathers, Irk found it to be dangerous and decided to tag along with Art. As Irk and Art were setting up bait for the great blackbird, Irk wondered if the quality would be the same since the feathers of the blackbird were extremely hard and dirty. Art asked Irk to relax and reassured her that whatever the people needed him to do, he would handle it to the best of his abilities. Though Irk trusted Art in making the imperial bed, she was still worried about him since the blackbird is a B-rank monster. When Irk offered to defeat the monster, Art refused her offer and wished to do it himself. Art found it very strange that the blackbird hasn't roamed around the area yet. After hearing the great blackbird's roar, the two realized that the blackbird was above them. As the blackbird broke their cover, Irk tried protecting Art from the monster. However, her normal attacks do not deal serious damage to the monster. Seeing the blackbird preparing for its acid attack, Art immediately paralyzed the monster in order to protect Irk. While the blackbird was still unable to move, Art took the opportunity and cut off the blackbird's neck with just one swing of his sword. Irk was surprised and was curious about Art's sword technique as she couldn't even see the sword. Irk was even more surprised when she learned that Art could also use paralysis magic. Art looked clueless as he learned that his abilities were not common. When they were about to skin the blackbird, Art noticed Irk being hesitant. When Irk stabbed the blackbird, she was immediately covered with the monster's blood. When asked if that was the reason why she always gets covered with blood, Irk asked for Art to be quiet about it. After washing off the blood and preparing the blackbird's feather, Irk was still worried if Art could really make the imperial bed with it. Both Tet and Irk were mesmerized when Art used his ability to clean off the blackbird's feathers. Irk was surprised after seeing the feather fully turned white. She was also surprised when Art explained that the blackbird's feather used to be white, but only turned black when becoming an adult. Hearing everyone in the estate giving him compliments, Art couldn't help himself but be embarrassed. When Art finally finished creating the imperial bed, Ramon was immediately in deep sleep after laying on the bed for a couple of minutes. Surprised when the others requested the same bed, Art decided to make a bed for each and everyone. When Tet made Art realize his potential and that other nobles may appear and take advantage of him, Art immediately remembered his past but happily responded that he just wanted to see everyone's happy faces. Art was embarrassed when Irk promised Art to protect his smiling face. As Art was about to head back to his room, Irk grabbed his hand and asked if he could visit the terrace later at night. When Art finally arrived on the terrace, he was mesmerized by Irk's beauty. As Art initiated the conversation, he was surprised when Irk mentioned that all the wonderful things happening to them were because of him. When Irk asked Art where he was from exactly, Art remembered that he had never mentioned it before and wondered if it was okay to bring it up. Irk reassured Art that she would always be on his side no matter what he said. Art felt glad and told Irk all about his time with the Rubedo family. Hearing Art mention his debt to the Rubedo family and blaming himself for failing their expectations, Irk was curious if Art really thought it was his fault. 
When Urk asked Art to be honest with himself, Art hesitated, though he knew that with Urk it would be fine. Urk then shared that she hated being called the Ice Princess. The Isfiel family was always prestigious amongst the nobility, even for a marquee. However, Urk never gave much thought to her family's position. Urk only wanted to be friends with everyone but was disappointed when she heard her friend and her father trying to use her for their own greed, though nobility of higher ranks held incredible power. Urk felt that she had been cursed by her position. When Urk asked Art if he hated the nobility, she was surprised when Art answered no. Art explained that even though being thrown out was painful, he realized that there are still kind nobles after seeing both Urk and Ramon. Remembering what Art said before, Urk was glad to hear his answer as it fit him well. As their conversation finished, Urk vowed never to forget the never-ending Rubedo Wenti as they took full advantage of Art's kindness. The following day, Urk was about to head to the Adventurer's Guild. When Art wished to tag along, Urk asked Art to take a break since he was working too much. As Urk left the mansion, Art heard the maids' woes as their vegetables were being swarmed with bugs. Art then caught the maids' attention, informing them that he had a great idea. The maids were amazed as they saw the bugs run away from the vegetables. Art then explained that he used laundry and bestowal magic to attach Ramon's scent. When the two are combined, it drives the bugs away. A man named Lord Frey overheard Art's explanation and was amazed by his work. Frey's presence alone created a massive commotion among all the maids. As the maids left and gave Frey and Art time to talk, Frey then introduced himself to Art as Urk's brother, Frey Isfiel. When Art greeted Frey formally, Frey asked him to stop with the formalities and complimented how his sister was so beautiful before asking Art to do a handshake. With just a handshake, Frey sensed something from Art and immediately asked him for a duel. Art later realized that Frey's hand was so cold. Frey coldly stared at Art as he waited for Art to show his hidden power. Art asked once again if Frey really wished for them to duel. Frey responded that he did since he felt a little rusty after traveling for so long. Art was curious about why Frey wanted them to duel but was only told by Frey that he wanted to gain brotherly points after defeating Art. After agreeing to Frey's request, Art was surprised when Frey vanished momentarily and showed up behind him. As their swords clashed heavily, Frey was amazed since Art was able to survive the attack. Art was terrified of Frey's slash since one move alone was equivalent to getting hit by a cannonball. Realizing how dangerous the fight would become, Art decided to get serious as well. Seeing Art becoming serious, Frey decided to increase his speed and charged at Art with powerful force. As their swords clashed, creating a heavy atmosphere, Frey did not expect Art to exceed his expectations since all of his attacks were blocked. Frey had no plans of losing the fight as his honor as the heir of the family was at stake for him. Showing any form of weakness to the other families could exert political pressure against the Isfiel family. That is when Frey decided that the Isfiel family must be stronger than anyone else. Even though Frey was already going all out, he was more curious about Art's limits. Frey was surprised and pleased when Art suddenly told him not to hold back and to wear him down. Deciding to no longer hold back, Frey cast a huge spell above them which caught Ramon's attention. Frey revealed that he could also use bestowal magic, and along with refrigeration, he could create ice. Seeing Frey's ability, Ramon did not expect less from his heir. However, Ramon and Frey were surprised when Art smashed the ice. Astonished by Art's abilities, Frey asked him how he was able to destroy the ice. After explaining to Frey about creating friction from bestowal magic, both Ramon and Frey found it very clever and were more intrigued by Art. Though the two only knew so recently and had different goals, all of it connects to Urk. As the two were amazed by one another's prowess, Frey sensed that Art was still holding back. Frey shared that he was still using 70% of his power, and that moving forward he was about to get serious. In the distant past, during the war between gods and titans, a titan known as the Great Wolf amassed fathomless power in a bid to destroy the gods. With one decisive blow, its jaws rent the earth asunder and devastated the world. Releasing his powerful technique that showed a massive wolf covered in ice, Frey couldn't believe it when his powerful technique was defeated by Art's single swing. Art, who has become one with his technique, destroyed and defeated Frey's technique and transcended the limits of human reason. As their swords each reached their limits and broke, the two had totally different reactions. Frey laughed and admitted his defeat. He realized that Art was really a good guy for targeting the blade of his sword to not injure him. When Tet finally found them, Art was shocked to learn that Frey was a royal knight. Frey reintroduced himself again as the first chair of the Royal Knights Magic Academy and the vice captain of the Royal Knights. Frey then asked for Art to be silent about the secret, revealing that Frey was basically already the captain, and only the king and the Isfiel family knew of it. At the Rubedo household, Wenty was making her usual ruckus. As she wondered where Art was and why her father had fired him, Wenty asked her father to dismiss the employee who had served her. Realizing that what had been served to her was the tenth one, her father wondered if it really was that terrible. However, Wenty just threw another tantrum as she wished that Art was still at the household. Understanding that they could never truly replace Art, 
The head of the Rubedo household reminded Wenti again that the royal ball was just in three days. After learning that the ball would still take place, Wenti's mood changed and she was very excited to wear the wonderful dress that Art had made for her. Walking to the garden, Frey called Urk's attention to let her know that he was finally home. However, instead of being happy, Urk found it annoying. Frey was disappointed when Urk greeted Art instead and asked him about the request that he had handled. Seeing Urk compliment Art and giving him such high regard, Frey was annoyed and asked Art for another duel. Hearing Frey's words, Urk assumed that Frey was bullying Art. Even though Frey tried explaining to Urk, he immediately felt defeated when Urk told him she hated him. When Ramon finally arrived, he asked Frey to apologize so that the issue would end. Frey then mentioned that he had a message to deliver. When both Urk and Ramon asked if it was regarding the event, Art was curious and wanted to know what they were talking about. After explaining to Art about the royal ball, Urk shared her displeasure at being forced to attend the ball. Unfortunately for Urk, her presence was requested by the Duke, which meant that she had no choice. Both Frey and Tet apologized to Urk as they could not attend the ball with her since they were busy with their own tasks. As Ramon wondered who could attend the ball with Urk, everyone's attention was immediately drawn to Art. When Urk mentioned that she would go if Art was coming with her, Tet was in favor of Art going as he was the perfect fit to be Urk's bodyguard and a representative for Frey. Realizing that he would again be useful to Urk, Art accepted their request which delighted Urk. When Urk decided to have her dress made she felt uncomfortable when one of their maids pointed out that her body was growing. After hearing the maid's words, Urk was confused as to why Art's face popped into her head. When the maid mentioned that they needed to have the bust enlarged, Urk was embarrassed when the maid mentioned that they may need Art's assistance. While the maid continued teasing Urk, Ramon and Frey on the other hand, discussed a different matter. Frey mentioned that Eclipse locusts were happening again. Ramon was worried about the land and their livestock as the locusts would destroy everything. Ramon was more saddened after learning that the Eclipse locusts had already begun and had already struck Paul. When Ramon asked for Frey's opinion about Art, Frey had a good opinion of Art to which Ramon also agreed. Frey found it very fortunate that they found Art as he thought of the bed Art made, dangerously comfortable. As Ramon mentioned that he would deal with the locusts himself, he then asked Tet to give him the report about the Rubedo family. Tet reported that a former staff member told him of a dark rumor. It was said that the Rubedo family has access to large sums of money from unauthorized sources. Ramon only hoped that nothing would happen. As Urk and Art were about to head to the ball, Urk shared how she finds nobles quite troublesome. To break her saddened look, Art told Urk that she looked beautiful. After telling Art to stop with the compliment, Urk was embarrassed when Art kneeled in front of her as he vowed to protect her. Art's action eased Urk's worries. Art has decided for himself that he would no longer be anyone's puppet. In front of the mansion, Art could see the worry on Urk's face. Using the cleanse and enchant perfume, Art was able to calm Urk down. As the two went inside the mansion and joined the party, all the nobles complimented how beautiful Urk looked. Seeing Urk getting uncomfortable, Art reassured her that he was there for her. After calming Urk down, they then heard the music playing, which prompted Art to ask Urk for a dance. As the two danced on the floor, Urk was surprised at how good Art's dancing skills were. A mysterious young lady spotted Art on the floor and immediately hugged him. Surprised to see the young princess Leah, Art asked her to release him. After sharing how Art saved Leah from a dragon's wrath and was her knight in shining armor, Urk made her presence known to Leah. When Urk asked Art about what just happened, Art couldn't explain it himself as he also did not know. When Leah asked for them to go to a quieter place, everyone's attention was immediately directed at Wenty, who had just recently arrived. Boasting the dress that Art had made for her, Wenty asked her father which noble he had picked to be her fiancé. When her father pointed at the fat noble who was stuffing himself with food, Wenty was shocked and insulted the fat noble. The head of the Rubedo family immediately slapped Wenty to stop her insults. After apologizing to everyone for the commotion, Wenty couldn't believe that her father would lay a hand on her. Scared of the man she was about to marry, Wenty ran away. Urk, on the other hand, was curious about how Art and Leah were acquainted. Realizing that Art was just really nice to everyone, Urk became curious when Leah asked if Art liked what Leah had sent her. When Leah boasted that she sent a large number of gold bars, Art became confused as he did not remember such a thing. Leah did not want to miss her opportunity with Art and asked him if he was free after the ball. While Leah and Urk argued about who Art should go with, Wenty, on the other hand, was running away from her father and her fiancé. Wishing for Art to save her, Wenty's attention was drawn to the commotion Urk and Leah were making. After seeing Art in the ball, Wenty called for him with anger in her eyes. Eight years ago when both Art and Wenty were still kids, Wenty was bullied by everyone and called various names. When Wenty asked Art to punish those who were mean to her, Art tried reasoning with her, telling her that she was a nice person. From then on, Wenty was mad as Art did not even try to save her. Back in the current time, Wenty asked Art where he was and if he had quit being her butler. Art was nervous and couldn't talk back to Wenty. When Wenty told Art that they were now leaving, 
Irk stopped her, as she could tell that the rumors about Wenty were true. Curious about Irk's identity, Wenty later realized that she was talking to the Ice Lady and immediately apologized for her discourtesy. When Wenty asked Irk why Art was acquainted with the Marquis family, she was only told by Irk to stand down and leave Art alone. However, Wenty was hard to persuade and responded that the decision was for Art to make. Art did not expect to meet Wenty when he decided to go to the ball. But when he heard Wenty mention that her orders were absolute, Art became nervous and could not speak properly. Seeing Art in an uncomfortable situation, Leah asked Irk if she knew about the story of Hiyoko. After explaining to Irk the similarities of the story to Art's situation, Leah told Irk that Art was not being dominated by his fear of Wenty. Hearing that Art was trying to retain his sense of self while returning to who he was in the past, Irk couldn't believe that Art, who can do almost anything, was listening to Wenty's orders. Learning that Art would rather listen to someone who would trample others and use them until they're all worn down, Irk asked Art why he would lie to her. Leah asked Wenty about the mountain of gold he had sent for Art. Wenty tried to feign ignorance but could not hide it anymore when Leah informed her that Art had already told her. When Wenty mentioned that all of Art's belongings were also hers, she tried asking for Art's confirmation. However, Art himself was still unable to talk. Wenty tried to manipulate Art once again to escape Leah's accusations. Art was now in a spiral as he tried to avoid causing trouble for Irk and ended up assisting Wenty. As Art showed a cold look, Irk asked Art if he remembers the first time he had helped her with his washing magic. After reminding Art of all the good things he has done for the Isfiel family, Irk asked Art to rely on her for once. When Wenty saw Art stopping, she told Art not to listen to Irk's words. However, Irk asked Art for another request which was for Art to stop lying to her. As Art turned around he felt somewhat released from Wenty's orders. Hearing Irk's request, Art felt that he was the worst for betraying the trust of all the kind-hearted people who had helped him. Knowing that he was about to betray Irk, Art tried to reach out to her but was dragged by Wenty as she no longer wished to stay in the mansion. Realizing that he had disappointed the only person that accepted him for who he was, it was then that Art knew he had failed as a butler. Art no longer wanted to lie to Irk. He then apologized to Leah and told her the truth. While everyone had a different reaction to Art's honesty, Art told Wenty that he was expelled from the house and was no longer her butler. Wenty tried ordering Art to stop talking. However, Art could no longer be manipulated as he told Wenty that he was now Irk's butler. Wenty froze as Irk told her that she would intervene if she plans to make Art do anything else. Wenty wanted to retaliate but instead threw a tantrum as she had thought that Art was always her butler. Leah reminded Wenty that their matter was not yet settled, and for her impudence towards the kingdom she would be punished right now. Hearing that her father and the other houses were escaping, Wenty told Art that she would not forget the embarrassment that she received before leaving. However, she embarrassed herself even more after stepping on her own dress and falling over. While everyone's attention was directed at the nobles who left the party, Art was surprised when Irk hugged and welcomed him back. Their moment was broken by Leah when she mentioned that she did most of the work. The two then continued with their argument but were abruptly stopped when Irk was told that terrible news was about to land towards her home as a large number of black bats were approaching. Art was introduced to Peters, the guildmaster. After their introductions, Peters then told everyone that they shouldn't be too relaxed, as the locusts were much more dangerous than they think. Peters revealed that 20 years ago, the locusts started getting imported to a famine-struck kingdom. Because of their black and hard shells, the locusts do not die easily. Art remembered in the royal capital books that there was a swarm of between a hundred million to a billion locusts. After sharing that the other cities had already been decimated, Ramon knew that there would always be a substantial amount of damage. However, Peters told them that this time was different, as there are now around 500 billion locusts. Surprised to learn the actual numbers, Ramon and Tet guessed that the pure Queen Batter's manifestation has shown up. Irk was confused about what they meant. Peters explained that black ones are the common ones while the white and large ones are what they call the pure. Knowing that it was ranked as the most dangerous, Peters wanted to defeat the pure right away, but was hesitant since its power was strong enough to destroy a whole country. When Tet asked how long they have until the pure arrives, Frey was surprised and now worried when Peters told them that the pure would arrive in one week. Another problem for them is that if the swarm would continue to take the exact route, then the royal capital Drad would eventually end up getting attacked. When Art offered a suggestion, Peters was doubtful of Art but was supported by Irk and Ramon as they wished to know Art's suggestion. When Art showed them his lemon water and explained that he could apply bug-repelling magic to it, Peters thought of it as a joke. However, they were all surprised when the maid shouted that it was because of the lemon water that the bugs stopped approaching her even though she didn't take much of it. Art then reassured them that if all things went according to plan, the lemon water could buy them time for the next two days. Learning the effectiveness of the lemon water, Peters asked Art if he could really do it. Art reassured everyone that they could leave it all to him. 
Art was confident that no matter what happens, he would protect the Isfiel family. Irk was now more amazed by Art on how he could stand up for anyone. When their meeting finally ended, Irk took a bath and thought that Art gave all of his power for her sake, and ended up always being saved. Outside the capital, Leah sneaked out of her home without informing someone. Leah couldn't let Irk take Art away from them as they were now on a mission to get Art and head to the Isfiel household. Art was not expecting to find locusts in the Isfiel family garden. As Art greeted his experimental locust, Irk saw Art's notes and was curious if he had looked at all the piled up books. Art responded that he had, as they did not have much time. Worried for Art, Irk asked him not to overwork himself and mentioned that he could always ask for her help. Art, who promised never to lie to Irk again, decided never to make Irk worry, and was grateful for her taking care of him. Though the locusts loved the wheat poisoned with enchanting magic, it still didn't help Art in coming up with a good plan. Art was surprised when Princess Leah suddenly showed up. After greeting Irk and Art, Leah told them that she came to help out and asked him to accept the mountain of gold she had brought. Even though the amount Leah gave Art before was less, it still left not just Art but also Irk in a frozen state after seeing the stacked gold. Leah also mentioned that she had brought the required materials regarding the black batters. When Irk told Leah that she may have overdone herself, Leah was annoyed as she somewhat boasted that what she had brought was not yet much. When Leah asked Art for his response, Art was confused and asked what response she meant. Princess Leah explained that she was talking about her marriage proposal to Art, which surprised both Art and Irk as they didn't even remember Leah proposing to Art. Leah tried explaining the events that transpired before but that just made no sense for Irk. The two started arguing again, putting more pressure on Art. When Art asked the two young ladies to stop fighting, Leah suddenly asked Art if she was not to his liking. Seeing Art unable to respond right away, Leah tried persuading him by bribing him with a book that contains explosion magic. However, Art had no need for such a spell. Annoyed, Leah decided to help out in another way. When Art asked Leah if she could help out with the locusts, Leah was surprised and immediately shivered in fear. Though Leah hated the task, she still wanted to do it just to help Art. After assigning the task to Leah, Art excused himself from everyone as he was about to head into the woods. Irk offered to go with Art as she was worried for Art's well-being since the Queen Batter was outside, which meant that the monsters had started to go savage. Art reassured Irk and told her that he was just going to get adventurers from the guild to help with the situation. Art pointed out that even though it was reassuring if Irk came along, Leah needed someone to watch over her. Thinking that she was once again being protected, Irk disappointingly agreed with Art. Seeing how the two were getting close, Leah felt dejected, which Art noticed and told her that she would receive a reward for looking after the princess. When Art finally left, both Irk and Leah read the books and observed Art's experimental locusts. As they observed the locusts' passive behavior, Irk reminded Leah that it was about time to feed the locusts. Seeing the locusts eat anything, Irk wondered where Art was now and if he was okay. Thinking like a loving wife sending her husband off to battle, Leah wondered why she had to wait along with Irk. As the two talked about the task given by Art, Irk changed the topic and asked Leah about the gold embezzlement incident. Leah revealed that they were planning on imposing an appropriate punishment on the wrongdoers and would most likely imprison them. Leah shared that usually such a crime would result in death, but in order to impress Art, they planned not to take their lives instead. Irk wondered if Leah planned on informing Art about the Rubedo family's punishment. Leah was not sure if she should tell Art, but when she saw Irk's worried look, Leah told her that women needed to have tolerance. Confused by what Leah meant, Irk then realized that it was a gentleman's job to try their hardest to gather a lady's favor. As she teased Irk, Leah was confused and wondered why she was giving advice to her rival. When Irk mentioned that it was time to feed the locusts again, Leah asked Irk if she would accept the gold bars. Irk now wondered what Leah was planning by giving her gold. At the Rubedo household, Wenty was sitting on her bed and was just silent. As Wendy sat on her bed, talk of the gold bars had been restricted. However, Wenty was never really interested in the money. What Wendy wanted was for Art to stay, but after being rejected by Art for the first time, Wenty realized that Art no longer cared for her. Wenty had trusted the world all because of Art. Even back when they were still young, Art was the only one who genuinely cared for her. Wenty always knew that her actions were hurting the people around her, which scared her. Since Wenty wasn't kind, she relied on Art's kindness, thinking of him as family. However, Wenty only repaid Art's kindness by treating him like a slave. Now, Wenty could only apologize for her actions. Even though she had hurt Art, she still liked him very much. Hearing the commotion outside her room, Wenty peeked and saw her father being arrested. When an officer saw Wenty and asked if she knew about all the wrongdoings done by her father and the Flamen family, he was no longer surprised when Wenty cooperated with them. As Wenty was being arrested, she could only think of Art and wish to apologize to him. On the other hand, Art was with the Sword of the Blue Sky Guild members as they scoured the forest. Getting along with them, Thea, a member of the Sword of the Blue Sky, asked Art if he had finished gathering the intel. 
Art responded that he had and was very grateful for them as they were able to scan the perimeter of the royal capital. Thea was surprised when the number of monsters showing up increased after encountering 20 of them on the road. Due to Queen Batter's influence, the monsters' appearances had been rapidly increasing. Brad, a member of the Sword of the Blue Sky, had his acquaintances put a dent in a goblin horde's population because there were so many of them. Though Art shared his worry about Queen Batter's ability to make monsters go berserk, Huey, also a member of the Sword of the Blue Sky, reassured Art that they would defeat any monster that came their way. When Huey hurt himself by walking into a tree, Brad warned Huey of a giant bear above the tree. As Huey was about to get attacked by the giant bear, he was fortunate that Art swiftly decapitated the giant bear's arm, saving him in the process. Both Thea and Brad couldn't believe how fast Art was since he had been beside them just a second ago. When the giant bear tried to attack Art and Huey, Art combined his skills to counter the giant bear's attack. Art was surprised when the giant bear could match his speed, but was still able to cut off the giant bear's head using his quick draw technique. While the members of the Sword of the Blue Sky were impressed by Art's skills, Art was more worried about the rampaging monsters as the effect of Queen Batter was much stronger than expected. All of a sudden they heard a strange sound and wondered if it was a song. However, they were in shock as they saw a swarm of black bats above them. Without a second thought, Art ran as fast as he could to give an updated report that the arrival of the black bats wasn't in one week, but rather in three days' time. The news spread all over the town making the people very anxious. Learning that some aristocrats had fled to a distant place, the citizens of the capital considered fleeing as well. Inside the castle, Chancellor Cirilla became enraged after learning that the threat of the Queen Batter was already spreading throughout the town. When informed about the people's distrust towards the monarchy, Chancellor Cirilla dismissed it and ordered the apprehension of everyone at the newspaper company. With the additional gruesome order to cut off their limbs, King Drad scolded Chancellor Cirilla and lectured him on how important the people were for a nation. The monarchy's subjects were worried about King Drad's health as it was not in the best condition. King Drad revealed that it was partly their fault since they hadn't had an effective countermeasure for a long time. Anil, the monarch's subject, reported that they currently had 3,000 royal knights present. However, a third of them could not be deployed as they would be focused on defending the palace. When King Drad asked about the three royal commanders, Anil reported that only royal knight Marcos was ready for deployment, while the remaining two were working on an assignment far away. King Drad was disappointed with their current generation. As the Drad household had fought numerous demons and helped develop the country, King Drad did not expect that a single monster could endanger a whole nation. While King Drad was making every effort for the sake of the nation's future, he noticed that he hadn't seen Leah and wondered about her whereabouts. After Anil reported to King Drad what Leah had done, the king became worried about Leah's well-being. At Art's laboratory, Art was surprised to see Locust One glowing. It was then revealed that Leah gave a gold ingot to the Locust just for fun. When they saw the outer shell change, they were somewhat persuaded by their greed to feed it with more gold. As Urk and Leah trembled and apologized to Art for what they had done, they were surprised when Art suddenly hugged and thanked them for their work. When Urk asked if Art was not mad, Art responded that there was no need, as the two princesses had made a great advancement in all of human history. When Art returned to his notes, Urk felt pleased as she was able to help Art with his task. Urk then realized that all the credit goes to Leah and not her. Realizing that Art came back safe and sound, Urk planned to show her appreciation. When Urk was about to hug and congratulate Art, they were surprised when Leah suddenly shouted. Worried about what happened, Leah explained that she was just so happy thinking that she was finally able to help Art. When Art asked Leah to stop crying, Leah requested to pat her head first. Seeing how Art patted Leah's head, Urk couldn't believe Leah's stubbornness. Tet opened the door and apologized for disturbing them. As Urk teased Leah, Tet, who wore a serious look, informed them that there was a situation they needed to take care of first. In the presence of the Royal Knight Commander, Art accurately deduced that the man before him was Frey's superior due to his imposing strength. Peters was taken aback upon seeing the Royal Knight Commander, assuming they were occupied with cleaning up the wreckage in the city. After confronting the A-rank monster that frequently emerged near the Imperial capital, Royal Knight Commander Marcos promptly approached Peters and the others. When Art attempted to introduce himself, he was surprised and bewildered when Marcos instructed them to stay out of the matter, as they were now taking charge of annihilating the monsters. As Marcos thrust his sword into the ground, it generated a powerful shockwave, shattering everything in the vicinity. Marcos then apologized to Peters for nearly harming everyone, explaining that they were outnumbered and had to weaken the monsters with a minor quake. Art found it hard to believe, as the original quake could only make an opponent's body quiver at most. When a giant bear threatened a nearby knight, Commander Marcos noticed and promptly blocked the attack with his own arm. He defeated the giant bear by pinning its head with his bare hand. As Commander Marcos headed towards the area filled with monsters, 
he effortlessly eradicated them, regardless of their power. Art was certain that among the people he had encountered so far, Commander Marcos's strength belonged to an entirely different league. Peters disclosed to Art that Commander Marcos was the reason why the Imperial capital had maintained peace to this day, solely focused on annihilating the enemy before him. Since Marcos joined the Imperial Knights approximately 15 years ago, no other nations had attempted invasion. Art marveled at how Marcos courageously acted as bait, buying time and ensuring the safety of everyone. He wondered if he had half as much courage as Marcos. Perhaps Irk wouldn't have shed tears. As Commander Marcos instructed everyone to step back, he blatantly disregarded others' concerns for him and prepared to obliterate another wave of monsters. Recalling Irk's promise, Art now wanted to be the protector after being accepted by Irk for who he was. Utilizing the combination of Art's abilities, he created a new type of magic called Misty Jail and multicasted, capturing the monsters above. When Art snapped his fingers, the monsters inside the Misty Jail vanished into thin air. Art did not escape the consequences of multicasting an enchant spell and immediately fell to his knees. Commander Marcos approached Art, introduced himself, and complimented Art on his impressive spellcasting. The members of the Royal Knights were surprised to hear Commander Marcos praising Art, as it was highly uncommon. As Commander Marcos expressed gratitude towards Art, Art was taken aback by the sudden change in behavior. He then reintroduced himself as a new member of the Isfiel household. While the two locked eyes, they were abruptly interrupted by Tet, who informed Art that Irk was engaged in battle with multiple monsters at a nearby orphanage. While fending off a pack of monstrous wolves, Irk felt frustrated, knowing that one mistake on her part could mean the end for the nuns and children she was protecting. Thinking of Art, Irk reminded herself not to be lenient. As Art was also risking his life to fight in the city, Irk had always worked very hard to be Art's strength. She decided to protect everyone, even if it meant doing it alone. Irk swung her sword to its fullest, knocking the wolves down one by one. As the dust blocked her vision, she was surprised when a rock came hurtling towards her. When Irk deflected the rock with her sword, she found herself surrounded by wolves. Realizing her mistake, Irk was about to close her eyes, accepting her fate. Suddenly, Irk saw the wolves being paralyzed and killed simultaneously. Emerging from the thick dust was Art, running towards her with a worried look. Art was grateful that Irk was safe and not heavily injured. Thinking she had been saved once again, Irk apologized to Art for not being strong enough. Art tried to console Irk and tend to her wounds, but she dismissed her injuries. Seeing Irk alive and well, Tet felt relieved as he ran towards her. Learning of a supposed emergency meeting at the guild, Irk and Art immediately left the orphanage. While passing through what was left of the city, Art noticed an injured knight on the ground. When Art saw a vice captain carrying his injured comrade, he handed them a salve, thinking it would help with their injuries. When asked about his identity, Art responded that he was only an ordinary butler and excused himself afterward. Irk smiled after seeing Art's kindness to anyone he wanted to help. After some time, Art and Irk were already at the guild auditorium. Peters called every guild member's attention before giving the stage to Art. After Art introduced himself, he revealed during his investigation that the Black Locust invasion rate was much faster than anticipated, expecting them to arrive at Firen in approximately three days. Art's sudden news caused panic and chaos within the guild, as there was not enough time for them to defend. Annoyed by the commotion, Peter slammed his fist onto the wall, reminding everyone of the urgent situation and asking them to quiet down and listen. Amazed by Peter's authority, Art informed everyone of his plan to use his magic-infused lemon water to keep the insects at bay. Some were amazed by Art's plan, but they were now curious about how to subjugate the locusts. Art revealed a way to subjugate them by presenting one to the guild along with a magic ore. In his experiments, Art discovered that a black locust ingesting minerals has an effect on its shell. When Art fed the locust with a magic ore, everyone was surprised when it kept twitching until it died. Peters informed everyone that black locusts do not have the right organs to digest mana. Since they are intolerant to it, this meant that magic ores are poison to the black locusts. When Art told everyone that his plan would maximize their chances of avoiding a battle and exterminating a large portion of black locusts, he was surprised as everyone fell silent. Suddenly, Art was bombarded with compliments from every member of the guild. Irk did not escape the mountain of compliments when Art mentioned that Irk and Leah caused the breakthrough they needed. As everyone regained their hope, Peters reminded them to prepare themselves since the decisive battle would be in three days. Art was already receiving so much strength from Irk just by being by his side. As the swarm of black locusts was about to reach the city, 
Art vowed that no matter what happens, he would definitely protect Earth. As the royal knights, led by Commander Marcos, prepared themselves, the citizens handed each of them flowers as a token of their appreciation. At the city walls, Irk and Art oversaw the knights and realized that the time had finally come for war. Irk apologized to Art for dragging him into the fight. Art smiled and told Irk that she didn't need to apologize since he would do anything to help her. Irk was surprised when she saw the Fire and Orphans greeting her, as Irk reminded them that it was not safe and instructed them to return to the refuge at the family estate. She felt glad and happy when the orphans handed her a good luck charm. The nun then explained that the children could no longer be stopped as they wished to give Irk the charm. Irk hugged the children and promised them that they would play again once she comes back. Since the war council was about to begin, Irk asked the kids to return to the estate. Seeing how sweet the kids were, Art was confused when Irk found it a miracle seeing them laugh now. Irk explained that the kids were disaster orphans and victims of abuse, abductions, and monster assaults. Irk personally supported their orphanage as it was experiencing some financial difficulties. Remembering how she first met Irk, Art was sure that the kids were glad meeting Irk. Their conversation was cut off when the Order of Knights arrived and the War Council was about to begin. As Peters explained their plan, he then introduced the leaders to everyone starting from Irk as the Outlook Squad Leader, Commander Marcos as the Diversionary Squad Leader, Art as the Ambush Squad Leader, and Ramon for the rearguard sweepers. After the war council for the decisive battle had ended, the knights ate, drank, and enjoyed their night before the war began. Seeing everyone having fun, Irk revealed that it was Peter's treat as he told everyone that it might be their last day. Art noticed that Frey looked like he was in a rush after they talked to him. Irk responded that Frey was headed west with the rest of the cavalry unit. Art was somewhat reassured after learning that Ramon and Tet were participating in the war since they were once former high-ranking adventurers. When Irk mentioned how dangerous the Queen Locust was, Art stood up and grabbed Irk. Art told Irk that there was a place that he wanted to show her. Irk was confused when Art brought her to a crystal firefly breeding ground. Knowing that they had different roles, Art apologized to Irk for not fighting side by side. When Irk asked Art if he was going to single-handedly defeat the Queen Locust, Art was caught off guard and responded that she was correct. Knowing that Art would defeat the Queen Locust no matter what, Irk grabbed Art's clothes with worry. Art asked Irk if she still remembered what they talked about on the terrace. Art expressed how happy he was when Irk accepted him for who he was. Art wished that he could be by Irk's side during her happy days as it was the first time he genuinely felt like he wanted to protect someone. Irk was surprised when Art suddenly hugged her and apologized for making her worry. Art mentioned that he was a butler, and it was his life's purpose to do his very best for his master even if it would cost his life. Surrounded by the crystal fireflies, Art promised that he would return to Irk by her side. The feelings Art kept close to his heart ignited a flame of hope in his chest. Art hoped that Irk might be blessed with overflowing happiness with his determination as a butler. It was thanks to Princess Leah who prepared large quantities of magic ores and wheat flour that the subjugation of the Black Locust was a huge success. Now, the remaining task for Art was to finish off the last few. The members of the guild along with their guildmaster Peters were handling the Black Locusts. Ramon and Irk noticed the smoke signal and hoped that Art would finish off the Queen Locust. Art, hiding in the bushes, saw that everyone had succeeded in dividing the Locust's numbers. Knowing that all he had to do was defeat the Queen Locust, Art remained cautious, aware that attempting to break through with magic would be futile against the Wall of Black Locusts. Wishing that the people who had supported him were by his side at the moment, Art knew it was not possible, and that he had to do it by himself. As the Black Locust slowly dispersed, the Queen Locust revealed itself, alarming both Art and Peters. Surprised, Ramon immediately instructed everyone to get down. One attack from the Class S Queen Locust wiped out a large portion of the forest, and the explosion reached the kingdom. Covered in rubble and piles of rocks, the knights immediately alerted the medics as there were many wounded. Art, who did not expect such power from the Queen Locust, hoped that everyone was okay and had survived the attack. Art was surprised when he could no longer see the Queen Locust in the sky. Everyone was frozen in fear as huge monsters now appeared in front of them. Seeing such dangerous monsters made Art think that the giant bear and the other monsters that showed up in the raid were nothing more than the Queen's test runs. As Art pulled his sword, he vowed to save everyone with his own hands. Inside the home of the Imperial family, Leah reassured King Drad that everything was fine. King Drad then requested Leah to sing him a song as he felt pathetic being ill and bedridden during a crucial time for his kingdom. Thinking that her father still somewhat acted like a child, Leah agreed to King Drad's request to sing him a song and reassured him that her supposed future spouse, the world's strongest butler, was at the war fighting for everyone. As Princess Leah started singing for her father, Art began decapitating each of the monster's heads and limbs. With swift movements, Art could produce multiple slashes in just a few seconds. As Art became more focused on annihilating the monsters, Irk prayed for Art's safety. 
Ramon asked Urk to stay alert as there was already a swarm of monsters near them. The soldiers felt fear after seeing the numbers of the monsters that had shown up. However, Urk gave them the guidance and fighting spirit needed to fight back against the monsters in front of them. With commands coming from Urk, they were able to put the monsters at bay. Urk was grateful for learning the art of war at an early age, as it had proved to be advantageous to them. Ramon was glad that Urk stayed in the fort with them, but when Urk responded that it was her wish to stay, Ramon asked her why she was lying. Confused at what Ramon was talking about, Urk received wisdom from Ramon and was told that the most important thing was to look within herself and never lie about her own feelings. Ramon and Tet asked Urk to follow her heart and leave the defending to them. Urk's wish was to protect her beloved city and its people. To make that wish come true, Urk gave everything she had. However, she knew that she did not possess the strength like the veteran warriors. The war was something they must win to protect Firin, and art was the core of the strategy. Urk knew that she did not have the power to do it alone, yet she still wished to be art's strength. Not wanting to lie to those dearest to her, Urk wanted to protect them, even if just by providing support. Urk then asked Ramon for permission to go to the front lines as she wanted to protect the city with the person she cherished the most. Ramon smiled and suggested to Urk to get away as far as she can since the Queen Locust was now right above them. Art later noticed that the Queen Locust was headed straight for their stronghold. While eradicating the monsters on the battlefield, Art knew that he needed to hurry, as the Queen Locust was headed for their stronghold. However, he also had to somehow protect the Diversionary Squad. All Art could do for the time being was to pray that Urk would be safe. With the Queen Locust's presence in front of them, the knights immediately called an emergency, as the Queen Locust was tearing them apart. Surprised by the Queen Locust's strength, the mages asked everyone not to move forward fearlessly as they cast and threw ranged spells at the Queen Locust. Unfortunately, their magic did not even reach the Queen Locust, as it was just nullified. Hearing a loud sound behind the Queen Locust, Urk wondered if it was another spell. Ramon then told everyone that they may not have to worry anymore as Commander Marcos has arrived to help them. As Commander Marcos apologized for being late, he vowed to vanquish the calamity that threatens their kingdom. Commander Marcos swung his sword, causing a huge shockwave. As the area was now covered in thick dust, Urk wondered if Commander Marcos succeeded. However, she was surprised upon seeing Commander Marcos being impaled. As Art was getting tired of killing the monsters, he still couldn't decide if he had to leave the diversionary squad. When a monster was about to hit Art, he was surprised and fortunate that Peters came to save him. When Art heard a familiar voice, he immediately turned around and saw Frey along with the other royal knights. Realizing that what Commander Marcos had told them before was correct, Frey instructed the knights to prepare themselves as they were now going to join the war. While Peters, Frey, and the rest of the royal knights handled the monsters on the battlefield, Art was told to head over to the Queen Locust. Art was still unsure if it was the right idea, but Peters gave him an order to go as he does not want to look after a kid like him. Frey then reminded Art of how powerful his primordial magic was and that he was no longer needed on the battlefield. As the other members of the guard were slowly showing up, Peters told Art that he was not fighting alone and that he was not the only one fighting and protecting the city. After observing his surroundings, Art finally realized Peters' words and agreed to head to the Queen Locust and fight alongside the person he cherished the most. Determined to defeat the Queen Locust, Art, along with everyone else, promised that they would come back home alive. While Art ran as fast as he could to the Queen Locust, Urk herself was the only one left standing and fighting the Queen Locust. Finally experiencing the power of an S-Class monster, Urk knew that a moment of hesitation could mean death. Though she was gambling with an uncertain outcome, Urk did not care as she had made up her mind to fight and protect the kingdom where her cherished ones lived. Hitting the Queen Locust with all the strength she had, Urk promised to never surrender. When the Queen Locust countered her attack and threw her off balance, Urk was becoming frustrated as she still wanted to fight and did not want to lose. While remembering Art's smile, the Queen Locust took the opportunity and attacked Urk while unable to defend. Fortunately for Urk, Art arrived just in time to catch her while blocking the Queen Locust's attack simultaneously. As Art apologized for being late, Urk was surprised and curious why Art was at the stronghold. Urk's tears ran down after hearing that he came to serve her as her shield as it was a butler's duty. When the Queen Locust tried attacking Art's back, Art immediately noticed it and cut off the Queen Locust's limb. He then asked Urk to defeat the Queen Locust together. Urk cautioned Art that approaching the Queen Locust casually was risky, as its praying arms had the power to nullify magic. Art directed Urk to strike the Queen Locust when an opening appeared, while he attempted to create a path. Despite the Queen Locust's multiple slashing attacks, Art successfully blocked them all while steadily advancing. When the Queen Locust seized an opportunity to strike Urk with a powerful attack, 
Art foresaw the move and evaded it. Taking advantage of the Queen Locust's missed attack, Urk seized the opportunity and delivered a solid blow to the Queen Locust. Urk marveled at Art's incredible skill, disrupting the Queen Locust's rhythm with just a feint. Enraged, the Queen Locust charged at them. Art capitalized on the Queen Locust's rampage, reading its movements with precision. Observing Art and the Queen Locust simultaneously attacking and defending, Urk was amazed at the equal exchanges, thinking she would find another opportunity to strike. However, Art and the Queen Locust's battle surpassed her comprehension. During their clash, the Queen Locust summoned a swarm of Black Locusts as their weapons clashed. Recognizing the Queen Locust's momentarily lowered guard, Art swiftly used his skill, Air Rending Wave, to disrupt the Queen Locust. As thick dust covered the area, Art decided to charge at the Queen Locust. Fortunately, he spotted the Queen Locust's attack and dodged just in time. Urk was surprised that the Queen Locust still had a move up her sleeve, feeling an immense fear and questioning if it was just an illusion. Art warned Urk of an impending threat, and she trembled with fear. When the Queen Locust revealed a new form, Art and Urk became more cautious, anticipating its full power. Art signaled Urk about an incoming attack and leaped to dodge the beams from the Queen Locust. Recognizing the Queen Locust's new attack pattern, Urk realized that Art's advantageous counterattack was sealed. When the Queen Locust spotted an opening and launched a beam, Art froze, anticipating a hit. Fortunately, Urk leaped in front, saving him from the Queen Locust's attack. Urk proposed a plan to bridge the gap, with her serving as a decoy for Art to land a decisive blow. Art was surprised by Urk's plan but witnessing her determination, he smiled and made a request. Art asked Urk to command him to defeat the Queen Locust, recalling how her words had transformed him before. Hugging Urk, he expressed that her words alone gave him courage and begged her to command him, not wanting to see her get hurt. Remembering their promise, Urk gathered her strength and commanded Art to defeat the Queen Locust. Accepting the command, Art used a physique boost enchantment. Bathed in a bright light from the sky, Art transformed and with his new appearance he used the Zenith Sword skill, single word cleave to cut the Queen Locust in half. As Art's attack left a massive mark on the ground, Urk witnessed the Queen Locust's demise and knew they had finally won. Seeing Art collapse, she dropped her sword and ran towards him immediately. After the decisive battle, Art was back serving Urk at the Isfiel family estate. When Urk asked about Art's status, he reassured her that he was fine, thanks to her. Despite Art's reassurances, Urk doubted his words since he couldn't move until yesterday due to the magic's backlash. Art continued to reassure Urk, explaining that he was now fine because he had consumed a ton of emergency potion made through alchemy. Alchemy, a life magic, combines materials to create something new. Urk expressed gratitude for the potions Art made as Commander Marcos and Urk recovered fast after drinking them. When Urk asked Ramon what he wanted to discuss, everyone was surprised when it was revealed that Art was being granted nobility. Confused about the meaning, it was later explained to Art that after defeating the S-Class monster and saving the kingdom, he had received a reward. Princess Leia was still upset, as they had only given Art the title of Baron and not Viscount. Art was still somewhat puzzled after receiving the good news, but all he could think of was that he was now the same as Urk and Wenty. Art smiled and finally accepted that what he had accomplished indeed was enough for him to warrant such a reward. Happy to learn that Art was now a noble, Urk was surprised when all the cookies suddenly vanished. Ramon mentioned that they could have more cookies prepared but they needed flour and sugar. Ruger comes from sugar flowers and sugar is a luxury to have. Due to the effects of the black locusts the prices of sugar have skyrocketed. They had hoped to mass produce sugar. Unfortunately monsters and insects were still in the way. Everyone was surprised when Urk suddenly told them that she has a solution for the sugar problem. When asked what the solution was, Art mentioned that he would just be using alchemy. After Urk asked for the sugar flower farmers to gather, Art then introduced himself and immediately started the sugar flower persuasion operation. Art then presented to everyone the fertilizer locusts. By feeding them ore that had been improved through alchemy using properties of the black locusts, the fertilizer locusts transformed from pests that ate crops into beneficial insects that produce fertilizer. After hearing Art's explanation, the sugar flower farmer introduced himself before crying in front of Art as he saw him as a good man. The farmers then wished to cooperate willing to pay whatever it takes. Art refused their money and only wanted an agreement from the farmers to share until they could stabilize the supply. Urk then floated the idea of hot springs to everyone. When Art mentioned that they can create it using alchemy, the farmers showed interest and wished to join as well. After finalizing the plans, Art wanted to confirm with Urk if the orphanage was still selling potions as they would need it to make the hot spring. At the orphanage, they were greeted by Sister Rax. After Art introduced himself, Urk then told Rax that she would place a recurring order for her potion. Rax wondered if she would be fine since the potion cost 200 each. When Urk showed interest in buying potions that Rax currently had in stock, 
Rax was worried that the common people wouldn't be able to understand the use of potions. When Art shared that he once drank 10 potions every day, Sister Rax was surprised since drinking too much potion would lead to addiction, and in the worst case scenario, he could die. When Art noticed that the potion was a high density potion, he was curious why it was sold so cheap. When Sister Rax revealed that she was a dark elf, Art felt bad as he forgot that dark elves were discriminated against just because they're said to be close to the devil. When Sister Rax mentioned that merchants would say that products made by dark elves were disgusting, Irk was annoyed after learning what Sister Rax was going through and asked for the names of the merchants so that she could teach them a lesson. The kids in the orphanage called for Sister Rax's attention as they were now hungry and complained that there was another leak in the roof. As Sister Rax promised to fix the roof, she told Art and Irk that she did not care what others would say about her since all she wanted was just to protect the kids. Art and Irk were surprised when they saw Sister Rax's appearance suddenly change. Art then offered help in fixing things in the orphanage. After some time Art gathered everyone in the bathhouse as he presented to everyone the hot spring he was about to make using alchemy. Mixing the elements and ingredients all together, Art was able to create a high potion bubble bath. While Irk and the others were being captivated by the bubbles produced in the hot spring, Art then informed everyone that the room was for the ladies, and that they were now headed to another room. Irk then complimented Art as he had outdone himself once again. As the ladies tested the hot spring, they took their clothes off and soaked themselves in the warmth of the hot spring. The men had already tested the hot spring themselves, which the ladies noticed as they overheard them from the other room. Sister Rax was surprised since she has never met someone as kind as Art. When Irk shared Art's qualities, she was startled when Sister Rax accurately guessed that Irk was in love. Sister Rax gave Irk advice to be more confident in supporting Art since he was a wonderful person. Noticing that Irk was not the only one who was after Art, Sister Rax informed Irk that she would be accepting the potion request. As everyone was relaxing and enjoying their time in the hot spring, a mysterious man was holding Art's photo as he was so eager to get a hold of Art. While everyone was having a pleasant conversation, they suddenly received a visitor. The man then introduced himself as Flaverick, the owner of the Eternal Shop in the Royal Capital. Ramon asked what Flaverick's purpose in visiting them was, but before they discussed the purpose of his visit, Flaverick gave them many gifts. When Ramon asked about the reason for the gifts, Flaverick mentioned that he had heard about Art's powers and thought that he could be beneficial for business. Flaverick, captivated by the magnificent things Art created, even called it a work of God. When Irk told Flaverick that Art had no intention of using his power to make money, he was immediately disappointed. Art then asked Flaverick about the reason he started his business. Flaverick dramatically revealed his past experiences and portrayed the tragic ending of his mother and her request. As Flaverick tried to persuade Art with his words, Ramon immediately intervened and asked him to declare how much of the profit they would be getting and state the rights concisely. Seeing how direct Ramon was, Flaverick did not expect less from the former minister. When Flaverick suggested a 50% share, Ramon immediately realized that Art's power would mostly be used. He raised the share to 90% and the rights would be transferred to them. As Ramon suggested for Flaverick to back off and not drag Art, Flaverick pulled out a letter making Ramon think of a threat. Flaverick explained that the letter was not about the Isfiel family but rather a secret of Art. He then threatened Art that if the secret gets out it would damage the Isfiel family. Ramon had enough of Flaverick and showed him a second letter. After informing Flaverick that the letter was anonymous, Flaverick's expression darkened as the letter was definitive. Seeing the letter containing a confession of how Flaverick paid someone to get the information, Flaverick accused the letter as made up and not true. However, Ramon was not having it and told him that he had already checked the facts. Ramon told Flaverick that he would overlook his disrespect towards him. But for threatening art, Ramon asked Flaverick if he wished to be eradicated along with his entire clan. Flaverick immediately bowed down as he accepted his defeat. Thinking that Art was almost dazzled by his magic, Flaverick was surprised when Art was glad that Flaverick's mother was still alive. As Art empathized with Flaverick, Ramon strictly told him not to easily forgive those who have wronged him. Art knew that being lied to hurts, but he knew that people who will be treated kindly can only feel truly forgiven. After Art read the letter, he told Irk that he immediately had to go to the capital. Art knew that there was only one person who knew his information. As he knocked on the door, Art greeted Wenty in his room. Curious as to how Art found him, Art revealed that it was Flaverick. When Art asked Wenty if it was her that wrote the letter, Wenty responded that it was not her and accused Art of ruining her life. Wenty stopped when she saw Art smiled and asked if he understood that she hated him. Art asked Wenty why she gave Flaverick's money to the information broker if she really hated him. When Art noticed the dress he made for her before, Wenty screamed at Art and asked for him to leave. Wenty was surprised when Art mentioned that he does not bear any grudges towards her. Art then shared that he knew it was Wenty who spread the information, and realized that she also lied in some parts. As Art's scar on his left shoulder was not a slave mark, 
but a burn when he was a kid. Wenty was speechless when Art mentioned that it made him happy when Wenty considered him as family. Wenty could no longer hold her emotions and hugged Art as she cried and apologized to him. Wenty kept apologizing for abusing him and taking advantage. After Art apologized, he then told Wenty that he now wanted to support the person he cherished the most, Irk. Hearing those words from Art, Wenty cried her heart out. That is the end of the recap for now. Please read the pinned comment about the next part.